Hey y'all, welcome back. It's time for a fresh top shelf video. If you're new here, my top shelf videos are basically, I'm trying to clean up my beauty room because I have no object permanence, okay? A lot of y'all can relate. I don't know something exists if I can't see it. And so when I go to clean things up in my beauty room after just the absolute nonsense that tends to happen here on a daily basis. Inevitably there are products where I'm like, I'm not gonna put that away because I use it too much and I don't wanna have to think about it to try and pull it back out again. So I'm going to leave that out as my top shelf, right? Those are my top shelf products, the ones that I literally can't put away because I would just pull them the heck back out again. Today we've got makeup, skincare, brushes, and a device. And actually, before we jump in, I wanna to talk to y'all about today's sponsor, which is the device. So I'm working today again with Current Body, and today we're going to be talking about the New Face Trinity. Yes, this is not an unfamiliar product to most of y'all. It's a microcurrent device. So these nodes right here, they make a microelectric current, and it's going to pulsate, not in any kind of, I mean, you can hardly even feel it, even if you have it turned up all the way. It has like, a mild sensation, but nothing annoying or uncomfortable or like nothing. While you're massaging your face with this, it's exercising those muscles and it's helping to like firm and tighten and lift and snatch is my, <laughs> my personal scientific term. It really does just contour the face in an instant way and then in a long-term way. The recommendation is to use this five nights a week for the first 60 days and then you can go into two to three nights a week after that, just for maintenance. And the advantage of the New Face Trinity over the New Face Mini or you know other devices that you might've tried is this little attachment right here. So this is the eye and lip attachment. So the little tiny prongs allow you the ability to target these little muscles that start to kind of weaken, right? Around our eyes and around our lips. And y'all, the results spoke for themselves for me. <laughs> I literally emailed my contact at the company the day after I tried the attachment for the first time and I was like, my lips are so plump. It was amazing. So to be clear, I do have lip filler, but it has nothing to do with these muscles right around here, you know? And so it's just like any other exercise for your muscles, these little currents are going to help exercise these muscles and tone them on your face. So it's super easy to use. There is a conductor gel that you put on your skin and you just, I mean, there's no pressure, there's no pulling, there's no tugging, there's nothing invasive about this. It is just like a really, really lightweight, not even a massage, it's just a, a ceremony. <laughs> and what I do is I'll just like, you know, put on an episode of something that I like watching or, you know, one of my favorite creators or something. And I pop, prop that up on my phone or on my iPad and just do this, it's pretty mindless. And y'all know I'm a big fan of a device in general just because it's not something that needs to be refilled. It's not something that's going to be an extra active in your routine. It's just something that's going to help, not hurt. And while I use devices for anti-aging and for acne, this is just totally different because this is strengthening and toning the muscles on my face. So, amazing deal. <laughs> I have 31% off of the New Face Trinity for y'all today. If you use the link below, Current Body is giving you 31% off of the New Face Trinity. So definitely check that out. Thank you to New Face and Current Body for partnering with me for a portion of today's video because this is definitely right in the category of my top shelf. Absolutely, it's like such an integral part of my routine. And without further ado, <laughs> we have so much to talk about. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the rest of my top shelf. So, I feel like I always have to establish a theme a little bit for these kinds of videos because it's like, what kind of mood are you in, Khaki? Like, what's, where's your brain at? What are you focusing your energy around aesthetically? And like, one thing that I'm dealing with is <sighs> acne. I've been having a lot of acne lately. I had some kind of health disruptions uh, like a month and a half ago, and I'm still just reeling from it. And I did just get, I got a facial at my esthetician and she does the La Roche-Posé dermaplane thing where they literally take a scalpel and they like scrape off your problem areas and then just like douse in glycolic. <laughs> So that's a vibe and I'm, you know, waiting for all of that to kind of chill out. I also used a new foundation today that I just got in the mail. So like, don't judge me on, on my complexion at the moment because the things I'm going to be talking about today that are top shelf are not all what I have on my face. But all that to say, I have been going for kind of like safe, boring things that are very reliable. It's like when there's a variable that's outside of your control my skin right now, like my actual, you know, my pores. <laughs> I kind of 
of want to control other things and keep them in a basic area of my comfort zone where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna feel pretty regardless. Like I'm not feeling particularly experimental with color and things like that right now. And also with my skincare, I'm focusing on things that just nourish. Anything that makes me feel moisturized, hydrated in my lane and thriving, so. Let's, let's do that. I have a thing of like my skincare body care here. This is basically, I got done with my routine as I finished using a product, I just threw it in here, especially if it was something that I feel like is new to my routine. So the first thing here is actually my double cleanse routine, because like I said, I'm going gentle, gentle, gentle. Maybe I didn't say that. I'm going for nourished and I'm going for less stress on my face and you really can't get more gentle than the Bloom Effects Double Cleanse. So this is the Royal Tulip Cleansing Jelly and the Tulip Next Nectar Cleansing Cream. So the jelly is a jelly. And it did come in a tub and they moved it into these tubes. They just added an E. And this is actually made out of like sawdust. <laughs> like thrown away sawdust. My words aren't coming very easily today, but nonetheless, Thrown away sawdust is what these little bottles are made out of. It's amazing. And yeah, tube made of picea wood. Okay, like what a time to be alive. And then the cleansing cream, y'all, like none of this is to me like any kind of harsh surfactant. Okay, we're talking about something that's just gonna break your makeup down and rinse clean and literally a cream cleanser that doesn't even emul like it emulsifies, but it doesn't like suds. It's so incredibly gentle and just kind feeling on my skin. So I got a chance to try those when I went to Bloom Effects in the Netherlands this past month. Today is May 1st that I'm filming this. That didn't go in the garbage can, that's fine. And it was honestly a little bit disconcerting at first. I was like, is it doing anything? Yes, it is. It just doesn't strip your skin. Big, big, big fan, huge fan. Another thing that I didn't expect to be like a star of the show because I don't know, I just kind of went for what was nearby. <laughs> in my mind, I was going through it the Sephora sale and I was like, I need a body lotion. And I've burned through all the ones that brands keep sending me, which, you know, thank, thank you to the brands for sending them to me. But I just happened to have like a moment where I didn't have anything to use. So I bought Old Reliable Kiehl's Creme de Corpse. Creme de Corpse. I told y'all I'm going to mispronounce everything on purpose because I don't know any better. Brain empty. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is just like, the most basic and the like best in that sense. Body lotion, because it doesn't have any fragrance to it. It's very nourishing, it's very lovely. It comes in an even bigger bottle than this that I will be buying the next time. And something that, I don't know, y'all can tell me. I don't know, I'm terrible at the science of these kinds of things, but out of weird, like, I don't know, just happenstance, I stopped using conditioner for a few days and I noticed like how much happier my skin was. Like, I don't know about my hair. <laughs> My hair might be getting a little dry. We'll see. It might have to go to like a once a week thing or something, but like stopping using conditioner, all my KP flushed to the surface. Like everything started to just chill out. My chest cleared up and everything. And I was like, huh, because I know that most shampoos and conditioners break me out, but I didn't think that my conditioner that I was using currently was doing that. And I just didn't realize kind of like how used to it I had gotten, I guess. And so I, I stopped again out of necessity. And it's like that, mentality harkens back to a thing that I hear sometimes brands talking about it, I've heard creators talk about it, where they're like, if you use too many moisturizing products, your skin or your hair or whatever gets kind of addicted to them and then they don't produce their own moisture. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> that might be the worst advice ever. I just wanna give the disclaimer that like, I don't know if that's true, but I'm kind of like trying to give my skin and my hair a chance to do it on its own because I do feel like I'm such a moisturizer monster. So like this has been really fantastic because it feels really balancing. It's not soupy, it's not watery, it's not giving me like, did I do anything? But it's also not giving me like, oh my God, I'm sleeping in an aloe leaf. You know what I mean? I'm not like covering myself in aquaphor before I go to bed. So it's this and then it's the Osea body oil that I use just my ride or die. So yeah, I really, really have been enjoying this. So like, yay kills. Yay kills. I have, don't take this the wrong way y'all. I've stepped away briefly from my make reverse emulsion. I know, I know. And it's only because right now I need my makeup to stick really well. <laughs> because I'm just so broken out that like, I'm very limited on the foundations that work for me and give me the coverage that I want that make me feel confident that aren't sliding around all day. And 
most things work better when I don't use the make reverse emulsion if that's what I'm trying to achieve, if grip is what I'm trying to achieve because it is slip. It's beautiful, beautiful, but like it's just not super agreeable with a foundation that I want to grip. So this oddly enough, I know, I know, I won't shut up about it, but the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore is a fantastic moisturizer for underneath makeup for me because it does actually soak in and it doesn't leave a finish on the skin. So that's been the main reason that I just wanted to call it out is like, if you're having issues like I am where you're just over moisturizing like crazy and your makeup is slipping around, like this still gives me all that moisture, but it doesn't have any kind of like cosmetic effect you know, in the finish of my skin at the end. And I've also, you know, I got back to trying Bobbi Brown sent some of the vitamin rich face base. Not like this is not top shelf necessarily. I just used this today and it did kind of remind me how nice it is to have something that's nourishing without making my skin like wildly glowy before I even go in with my foundation. Now, when I'm going to sleep, that's a different story. Okay. And I just got a new bottle of this. This is the Iconolab Renewal Face Oil. This is my favorite face oil. And I just thought it was worth mentioning because I have been talking about other face oils lately, right? There have been other things that have come across my plate, as it were. You know, a brand's been sending them to me and things like that. Very, very nice face oils. But like, it just wasn't doing the trick. It just wasn't doing what I'm used to a face oil doing. And they're just not all created equal. This is the best one. You can get 20% off of it down below. You know, I've had that for years. I've been using this for years. I've had the same discount code underneath every single video for years and years and years because it's just great, okay? It's just a really, really good, like teeny tiny company that makes these in like little micro batches and it's just the best face oil. And I've just gone back to using it, so yay. And, 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 in the spirit of wanting my makeup to go on without a bunch of slip underneath it, because y'all know I love the Bloom Effects SPF, but it is slippy, it's gorgeous. If your skin is in really good condition and or you're just used to kind of spot concealing, that's the ticket because it's gonna give you that beautiful, cosmetically elegant, like dewy, glycerin-y finish on the skin, and it's also really good for your skin. But lately I've been needing my makeup to stick, okay? And that's why I have got, well, actually this is, I think it's almost empty. Like I used it today and I was like kind of touch and go. I need to order another one. So this is the Tula Mineral Magic and it, it has the distinction of not doing anything like that. Doesn't leave any slip. In fact, it might help grip. It doesn't have that like hydro grip feel to it or anything, but it just dries down and it's really blurring and beautiful. It has a little bit of a golden tint to it. So like bear that in mind if that's not your thing. Some people say it's like too, like violently too warm for them kind of thing. And I feel like it's about the same color as the Super Goop Glow Screen, although they just came out with a bunch of shades in that. I can't keep up. And you can see it is a little bit like golder than my skin but like I find that it's negligible by the time I get it on my face. And if, if nothing else, I mean, it's actually really flattering, but it's mineral. So the glow screen is not, this is, and it's just a really elegant formula. It's so good. So yeah, I had to pull it out to show you. So this is the Bloom Effect sunscreen and it doesn't have the gold. It's more of like a, I don't know, it's almost like a neutralizing lavender almost. You know what I mean? It's like this kind of like gray lavender, which, I don't know how that's gonna work on all skin tones, to be honest, but the owner of the company is Asian. So it works on at least medium skin tones, but that's not, you know, I, I can't speak to everything. Like I said, look at that. Look at that sheen that it gives to the skin. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Not particularly conducive to putting on a long wear weightless foundation. <laughs> on top of it because it's just gonna kind of like deplete the long wearingness of it but by itself it's so unbelievably beautiful and I mean under a dewy face of makeup it's beautiful it's just if you're trying to get coverage and you're trying to get 24 hour longevity which I'm not but like you know what I mean if you're trying to get grip it's gonna work against you in the grip department I am gonna try and shade all of my reviews and all of my recommendations in this you know with the the caveats of reality like just because it's my top shelf doesn't mean that it's a perfect product I will just say that and we will definitely go into that in more detail okay so the next bag of stuff that I have <laughs> is kind of in no particular order it's mostly makeup so that's kind of where the direction we're going in here but like if there's some skincare care products in there like that's just how it is that's just how it's gonna be so in the spirit of full disclosure here, this is the new by Rado Pal, this is the Remembrance Pal, it's $105. Like, don't spend $105 on this if you don't like really like a good Sherbert moment, you know what I mean? You're just, you're just, this is all like 
fruity ice cream colors. That's what you're going for. It's just blushes and apricot colors and like you do have a couple of deep shades here but you also have these really wild like cool tone silvers that are intoxicating if that's your thing. This is not to me a perfect palette because I don't necessarily get the longevity out of these formulas that I would have hoped for. They're beautiful enough that I want to use something to prime underneath like the Hindash Color Fluid in Canvas does an amazing job of mattifying my base so that something like this will stick better but on its own for $105 it should stick on its own and they just don't wear that long on their own. That's one caveat. And the other is for all of these beautiful textures and for God, how many is that? 18 shades. We could have had a little bit more differentiation in the finishes. I would have loved to see something that was in this like ridiculous glitter that isn't silver because I don't always want silver on my eyeballs and like clearly they can do it. Why couldn't we get it? Maybe this one is. That one's, that's still, that's still just uh, like a foiled satin. So like, I would like to have seen a little more shimmer in here, something with a little more excitement. I really feel like we could have deleted, you know, one or two of these and gone for something with a little bit more textural satisfaction. So I do find myself reaching for something to top it with. And I do have lots and lots, I have lots and lots of makeup, let's be real. But I do have lots and lots of single pan toppers that I like to use with this. But like I said, top shelf, but not perfect. Also, I do not like whatever this is. I minored in art history. I should know what this is, but I don't. I don't love this packaging. It could have been a lot better. Let's talk about some Victoria Beckham, okay? Because why do my ears look like they're like poking forward? I think I'm just used to Lily Sadugi headbands like coming to a point at the top and the fact that this one doesn't makes me feel like, why is my head so round? So yeah, Victoria Beckham has been stealing the show lately from the standpoint of like new products and old products that have made it back into my routine. So the primer, I mean, we might just do, like, this might be kind of quick. The primer is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's a really good hydrating primer that makes your skin bouncy, but again, doesn't add this like wild slip that's going to inhibit your makeup's ability to grip to your face. That's kind of been the vibe lately. And lately I've been on the golden one because oh, I guess I'm just reaching for spring really hard. <laughs> I really want to be tan and like I don't get a really you know massive tan in the summer because I wear a lot of sunscreen and also look at me <laughs> just look at me but if you're concerned at all about a little bit of bronzing and a little bit of shimmer skip the golden one I feel like it mixes beautifully with my Chanel foundation it's just a beautiful deepener or richener for my foundations because you know my skin tone does change a little bit as it starts to get sunnier outside but if that worries you at all just you know, go for the clear one. They both have the same beautiful, like bouncy effect on the skin, again, without adding too much slip. The next thing are these freaking eyewear eyeshadows. I am so into these. I love these so much. You will almost never catch me making an excuse to use a cream eyeshadow over just a regular powder eyeshadow, but these have changed my mind on that. So I just happened to pull, actually, these really are like the two shades I've been wearing the most. Oddly enough, trench because it's really close to my skin tone so it makes a really nice smoky effect without me feeling like I have to work too hard to blend it and then the one that just lives in my mind palace like would I have ever conceived of this color on my own as something that I just would be so into no but oyster is just it's I realized y'all it's khaki I said it's like a little bit green you know it's khaki it's khaki colored and so it really goes with gosh darned Everything, like every eye look can benefit from Oyster for me. My friend Natalie of my skin trust was sending me all these swatches that she was doing of all of her cream shadows and nothing touches Oyster for that particular color. Does that mean that you need it because it's a really unique color? Not necessarily. Like if you don't wanna wear something that leans a teeny tiny touch green, then, then don't. But I'm just saying it's incredibly unique. I have like found almost no excuse to like not include it in my eye looks like it's always kind of the finishing touch and the wear time on these is great the performance of these formulas is great that's another reason i don't reach for cream shadows that often is just because i'm like okay well you know it's gonna crease before i'm even done doing my makeup these don't and the color story is awesome okay a theme for the color cosmetics in this particular top shelf is 
this like warm and cool duality and I don't mean like super warm versus super cool. It's more like rose versus peach. Those are my two things that I'm going towards right now. Today I went full rose and it leaves me with this very neutral look on my skin. And then if I wanna really amp it up, I can move a little bit more towards like the orange end of everything in the peaches, the corals, the apricots. And that's kind of the duality that everything focuses on lately. Like that's the blush colors that I've been buying and that I've been playing with and things like that for pretty much every release. And this is no different. So I recently finished my bikini lip gloss from Victoria Beckham. That's what I'm wearing today and it's just the best. And if you are deeper, poolside is a very, very similar effect. Like its undertone is almost exactly the same and it's just slightly deeper. And so it's not gonna leave you with as much of that kind of like sometimes unflattering milkiness that can gather in your lips. If it's too high contrast, Poolside is going to be a better version of that for you. So this is my favorite just because, I mean, it's like someone took buxom white Russian minus the plumping quality, but like plus so many other things and just elevated it, put it in glass. It's a formula that's never gonna give you that white ring of death. Like it's just so lovely. So then what did I do? If I was gonna order it, I was, you know what I mean? I might as well try another one too because it's my job. So I went ahead and ordered Picante because oh my God, <laughs> this is just exactly the color that I wanna wear right now. Look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. And so alone, you're like, oh, that's a nice kind of peachy color. But then you compare it to bikini and it's like, oh wow, okay. I really see what you're talking about, how like one is very beige rosy and the other one really goes like pop, you know? And that's where I've been at lately. I've been in the rosy and the pop. And that's what I've been buying everything in. <laughs> when I said that like, I want things to be in my comfort zone. This has been the comfort zone that I'm talking about. So I'm really excited to like, even though this is such a subtle formula, I'm like excited to do an entire look just around this new lip gloss for me. So on the same vibe, I won't spend too long here. These are just great and I can't stop using them. I obviously like, look at it, look at this one. I've been using these constantly, even if it's just as a base for the rest of my blush, it just goes on so easily and it looks so pretty and it, it just takes care of at least half of my like blush routine in one step. It's so awesome. So this is the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. Pillow Talk being the shade you can only get on her website. And then this is Peach Pop. Peach Pop is <clears throat> wildly vivid by comparison to Pillow Talk. So again, we're talking Muted rose, wowza, <laughs> okay? Like that's a fluorescent coral and you can go too hard on it way too fast if you're complected like me. And I kind of love that about it. You know what I mean? It's two very different moods that can kind of push pull on each other. And I do use both of them so much, but I will say, I mean, you can tell by looking at them, it's, it's pillow talk all the way. Like that's the one that I just keep going for. And what's great about it, yes, it's a liquid. You can just like blot it right on your cheeks and spread it out with a brush but it dries down completely and then you can work on top of it with powder. It is just the most agreeable. It's so agreeable and like I would never, it's another product where I'm like, I would never have told you that this was something that was missing from my routine until I tried it and I was like, oh, that actually did deserve to exist. More of the peach pink push pull. These Armani blushes are so worth the wait. They're so great. Let's actually, let's do just like a big swatch of all of my peach pink push pulls. How's that? So you can see actually how lovely and sheer that is. Like I did really go in to get a swatch and I love that it is so like forgiving on the skin. In fact, <laughs> I might just put a little bit more on. So this is number 50. It has a name. I don't know what it is, but that's giving just the prettiest soft, pink vibe, right? So pretty. And then we have 30, which is that coral shade. And I admit I do use, just like all the other ones, I use the pink more, but I don't know if my routine would feel the same without that, you know? There we have the matte blush ones. Oh, I'm glad I went ahead and sensed the theme so that nobody roasted me in the comments about it. There are the VB lip glosses. It's honestly kind of a nice simplification if you think about it, you know? If you're like looking at a new blush release or whatever and you're just like, hey, I know what works. If I like the formula, 
these are the colors that I can work with. And then the final one, and I don't even want to call these necessarily top shelf, they're just kind of new to me, so they're exciting, but it's like everyone had the same memo. These are the two shades that just came out from LH Cosmetics in the Fantastic. So this is Sunstone and Topaz. Okay. I'm not the only one who's in this mood. It's a mood that's happening everywhere. So we love our cool pinks. We love our nice warm apricots. And that's the mood that I've been in. That's been my top shelf lately. And it feels nice to kind of concentrate my efforts. I know that the things that I reach for are going to make sense together. All right, the next thing has made a massive return, revival, what have you, to my collection. And that is the Victoria Beckham Matte Bronzing Brick. I have it in 01. This is just like, the thing that I never knew that my, my complexion look needed until I started dipping a brush into this light shade right here and using it to just like fill in the gaps where I felt like my blush was too contrasty or too skippy or whatever. The difference between my concealer and my blush underneath my eyes. And as soon as I start in with that color, everything just starts getting better. And then this right here is actually this really lovely kind of contour shade. I just find that it works really great as a finishing color. Like, do I use this the most? Yes, this is the Natasha Denona Contour Sculpting Powder in one, but let me show you all the shades next to each other. They're so different from each other. So this is the Victoria Beckham, which you could argue could be used almost as a bronzer. So it's not gonna get you in as much trouble. And then this is the Natasha Denona. It's like green, you know? It's like that really great kind of like desaturated green gray khaki color that's gonna give me like a really believable looking contour. And I do like to finish with a matte contour because I feel like it is supposed to absorb light. That's the whole point. It's supposed to accentuate and um, even, you know, create the illusion of more shadow. And you don't want to do that with something that's balmy, that's going to create a, a shine on your skin. So even if I use, which I do, a cream contour, I still finish with a powder contour because I'm high maintenance. Another eyeshadow palette, and this one actually I have zero complaints about. I just need to talk about it because it's like recapping on current events. Also, I spilled some oil on it. Sorry, Hindash. This is the Hindash Monochromance palette. I also have Beautopsy. I'm just using this as my visual aid here. But these have come back into circulation for one very, very important reason. Well, two important reasons. One is that they're great and the colors make a lot of sense to me. I love the way that they're set up. But the, the main thing here is and Yelika Nikvist put out Singe Beauty, which are these brushes so far. And they are so excellent. The way that they pick product up and how quickly they blend it, they behave like a natural fiber brush, but they are vegan synthetic. They are awesome. And the shapes are great. They're all, so far, they're all small. So they're all detail brushes. And it makes me so happy to have that much of a selection of them. I think it's like $55, I bought them. Like $55 for like five or six brushes, like it's not a crazy expensive thing. And these are really, really sheer. They are meant for the whole face. And so they go on in these very soft layers, the way that if you're used to watching Hindash's content, you know he works in very soft layers. This shortens, cuts it in half, the time that it takes to use one of these. Like it picks up so much product, with so little effort and blends it so beautifully, like you just pick up such a nice even amount of product and I just, it, it completely changed my relationship with Hindash's palettes. So I highly recommend these two together. <laughs> A, a weird little match made in heaven. All right, let's grab a couple of complexion products here and just get them out of the way because y'all know. <laughs> y'all already know. So this is my ride or die foundation. There is just something so versatile about this formula and it should be because it costs $135, okay? I'm not gonna beat around the bush on it. The Chanel Sublimage Letant is wildly expensive. I think that Chanel has they're hit or miss, but they have complexion on lock. Their foundations, there is really something for everyone if you can tolerate a fragrance. <laughs> and when I say there's something for everyone, I didn't mean a shade. No, no. No, I did not mean that. They need to work on that. There are so few shades. The formulas, there's so many different formulas. Hey, let's knock down some of the formulas because the Revitalizing Camellia Foundation and the Le Beige, they're pretty similar. The healthy skin, healthy, glowy, whatever the heck. Either way, they're pretty similar. So like, let's just kind of like kill a couple of them and move forward with a, a bigger shade range so that everyone can appreciate this. Also take the octanoxate out because I really want to get back to using the Vitalumier Aqua, okay? Just as long as we're making requests to the Chanel universe. So this is 
clearly almost done. This is my favorite foundation. Again, it mixes really beautifully with the Victoria Beckham primer if I wanted to like richen it or to thin it out even, but it goes up really thin on the skin on its own. You can wear this like full coverage and it will tolerate powder and it's super, super hydrating and smoothing, but you can also thin it the heck out and it never complains and it doesn't grab in your pores. I don't know how they did it. It's really, really great. My skin is always happier that I wore it. I wash it off and my skin was like, yay! Like, yay, thank you for doing that. Thank you for that being the thing that we wore all day. So that's what keeps me coming back to it and that will keep me repurchasing it. Now, this has been the revelation of revelations lately, right? Because that thing's $135 for an ounce? An ounce of product. This is the new Givenchy Skin Caring Concealer, Prism Libre. It's $37 per point, for 0.37 ounces. So that is a much more isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Wait a second. Pretty sure when you go pound for pound, this is $100 an ounce. This is $135 an ounce. Yes, it's more, but still, if you're talking about the Kosas concealer, I think it's like $150 an ounce. So put that in your math pipe and math it. This has gone viral for over 30, but also like, I don't see how anyone would, you know, dislike it. It's just so darn pretty. It is a concealer that comes in a whopping huge amount for a concealer, and it is relatively affordable for a Givenchy product. And it is hydrating, has a great wear time, gripping, does not crease. The shade range is pretty okay, as far as I can tell. Not great, but pretty okay. Better than some. And it doesn't have a fragrance and you can wear it as like a foundation if you want to, you know? Like it really does just like layer and build so effortlessly. Huge, huge fan, especially for my dry skin. So y'all have heard me talk about this absolutely nonstop from the first moment that I tried it. I just like ran to Instagram and I was like, y'all, this is gonna sell out. And it did. So yeah, this is incredible. I told you there would be a little bit of skincare in here, but this is more of like a cosmetic skincare product. Again, Natalie, my skin trust, told me to buy this and I'm really glad that I did. This is the Hourglass Equilibrium Intensive Hydrating Eye Balm. And this is fantastic for your under eyes. Is she, to paraphrase her, is it the best eye cream in the world? No. It's the best eye cream under makeup. If you're like crusty crusty, like I usually am, this is going to do the trick. It's gonna give you that hydration under your eyes that smooths things out, but it's not going to interfere with your makeup. It's not gonna be all weird and oily, greasy, break your makeup kind of thing. So the consistency of this is, it looks like the Charlotte Tilbury overnight cream, but it's not sticky. So it just has a really nice kind of nourishing, like a little goes such a long way and it really, really soaks in, but it's super thin, but not silicone-y. It's like a gel serum, I would say. It's so lovely and I'm really glad that I got it. It's really expensive, but I mean, you use so little of it that, you know, it's, it's definitely become part of my actual like makeup routine. My bronzer of choice lately, I cannot put this thing down. When I pan it, it's gonna be hilarious because it's just gonna be all cat hair. I don't even wanna talk about it, but this is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. It's kind of like the Victoria Beckham bronzer in the sense that I don't really know what I did in my routine before I used this because it just helps to so subtly shift the color of your foundation in certain places more so than using a bronzer. And I feel like the subtlety of it is its strength. It's so uncomplaining on the skin. It looks really healthy because it's kind of a gel, but at the same time, it doesn't disturb the makeup that's underneath it. I really, really enjoy this and I've been using the living daylights out of it. That's why I'm not opening it because it's covered in cat hair, it's disgusting. Let's chat quickly about some of the like the mainstays that y'all have seen before, but that like, you know, warrant mentioning because I've tried a lot of finishing powders lately, yes I have, but I just opened a new Kosas and that's what we're doing. That's where we're at. This is the Cloud Set and Airy. I'm still on it. And I also have Breezy. Dries out. We'll see. Maybe as my skin gets a little bit darker in the summer, it'll be what I'm kind of trying to work towards because again, I've been using the Victoria Beckham bronzer on my skin as almost like a finishing powder. So we'll see. It'll really depend on the undertones, but I have both of those open. We are still firmly full speed ahead, even though, like I said, it's had lots of competitors in my routine lately, but I've, I've come back to what works. Another thing here, 
worth mentioning. I don't know why this tiny little thing has such a choke hold on me, but it does. This is the Surratt Smoky Eye Baton, and I don't know why it works so well. It's like a trick deck of cards. It just does things without you really having to try. And so it's got eyeliner on one end that's kind of blunt, you know what I mean? It's kind of dull and like, it's fine. I do use a brush to kind of smooth it out, anything with like a point on it. And then you open her up, She's got this powder right here and you just kind of stick it to the eyeliner and it fills it in so that you get a really nice even line which gives the illusion, the true illusion that's very effective of thick eyelashes and I'm never looking back. Speaking of Surat, this really goes right in line with like the Hindash palette in terms of like things that live in my mind palace as like comfort zone safe places to go to when I wanna look pretty. You know, it's like, okay, there are too many variables that are outside of my control. I wanna do something that looks really pretty today. I'm gonna to stay in colors that I'm comfortable with. I'm gonna work with formulas that I know I can rely on. This is the ideal quad. So the shades here, because this is a custom quad, let's see if I can remember them. I'm gonna say I'm wrong on purpose. Chocolate Noir, Chamois, Ombre, and nope, that's Ombre, and that's Haute Chocolate. If you wanted to recreate this quad for yourself, they did send this to me, but I bought my own one with six pans in it before that, and a lot of them didn't work out for me, so I'm glad that they picked these out for me because I like them a lot better. This formula is off the charts. Now, I will kind of paraphrase Tom, Hope Miss Tom, saying like, if you're somebody who's really into that crazy satisfaction that you get from like an indie shadow and lots of texture and things like that, you're not gonna get excited about these. But if you're someone who wants something that's extraordinarily reliable, but it's so much better than like a Chanel quad or a Tom Ford quad, like so much better, the process that I'm not actually sure the details of, of making these eyeshadows just ensures this wild blendability, but it doesn't blend away. They're awesome. They are awesome. If what you want is like a truly like a high quality shadow that just seems to work with you, that's what they do. They're really, really excellent. A few toppers. Like I said, I've been working with that Byredo palette and it does work really well. Like it does a lot of what I, I like, again, like my mind wants eyeshadow to do, but it just leaves me wanting a little bit in terms of like finishing texture, right? So Hourglass Ray, I, I know everybody's sick of hearing about it because it's just really excellent. It's kind of that perfect pinky brown copper color that I live for. And then something extraordinarily similar, cause like I am kind of a one trick pony right now, is Bronze Brocade from Coolfee. And it's just gonna give a very similar color, but like more metallic and less kind of spangly. And then, especially as I have been, like I said, working between that push pull of neutral versus really pushing the warmth, I've been coming back to this so often. I, you know, I also need to pull out the YSL one, the Confident Nude. That one is so good. It's so good, but it's quite red. But this is Sunlit Diamond from Charlotte Tilbury in the Hypnotizing Pop Shots. And like, is this the world's greatest formula? No. Again, it's not very tenacious in terms of wear time. So if you put it on on its own, you're gonna be pretty disappointed. It does crease pretty quickly. But the color, like what it lacks in formula and performance, it really makes up for in color. Now, can you get this color in the Rose Metals palette from Anastasia? Yes, but I do feel like it is unique enough in its finishing texture to be a topper that's really, really effective and it does give you kind of equal parts, metallic and spangly. And I just feel like it catches the light in really beautiful ways. And for whatever reason, like I said, it's an imperfect product, but I've been really, really liking it. I've been really enjoying it for what I want to use it for, for the art supply quality of it. And if you're curious what I'm wearing on my eyes today, I did reach back into the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. I just don't love talking about this because like you can't get it anymore. It was just like so limited edition that if you didn't buy it the moment it came out, they like didn't make anymore. So I don't know, it feels a little bit silly, but yeah, I'm just wearing this one kind of topped on top of the Surat quad. Okay, and the only other thing that I wanna talk about real quick, and it's again in the spirit of things not being smooth <laughs> on my face and me kind of having to work around a lot more texture than I've had in a long time and a lot more acne and just like, you know, misery making things than I've had in a long time. When I am using these foundations and complexion products that do either already have kind of a like more skin-like finish rather than nice and dewy and smooth, or they look that way because my skin is just soaking up all the moisture in them. The finishing spray really matters. And even though I just, I know, I know, I hear it, I hear it and it hasn't even come out of my mouth yet. Even though I just bought four MAC Fix Pluses 
on sale. They were on sale at Ulta for half price. Nonetheless, <laughs> I have gotten way back into Magic Radiance, the Fix Plus Magic Radiance, because it's just that much more exponentially smoothing. So did I go on to the Mac website with my pro discount and get like three more of these? Yes, I did. So why am I wet? What is that? I think I spilled Max Fix Plus all over myself. So I think that this is empty now. Hope that order comes soon because I'm now covered in Fix Plus Magic Radiance because this lid is broken. So that's the other reason that I need another one. And now my leg is going to be magical and radiant. Time to change clothes. Either way, yes, I got Amanda even hooked on this because like, if you like Fix Plus, this is just like even more glycerin and gorgeous. If you already have combo skin or oily skin, I'm not gonna wanna use this one. Well, who knows, maybe Tom. Tom has kind of oily skin, they might like it. I'm not going to discount anybody liking this, but I do want to just kind of hedge my recommendation up front. Like, it's not screwing around, okay? It's gonna give you some glow and not like any kind of shimmery glow or anything, but it's gonna make things glow, so. Bear that in mind, that's why I like it. <laughs> and now it's empty because I literally just spilled it all over myself. Cool! <laughs> Well, y'all, that's my top shelf. I hope this was enlightening for y'all. I love sharing these kinds of videos so that y'all can see not just like what I'm liking that's like come out recently or whatever, or like my favorites. Like it's not about the temporal context of these things. It's about like what I'm into right now, regardless of how long I've had the product. Like what I want to reach for because that's what's filling up my DMs, you know? It's like people being like, but what do you use? Like, what do you like? And that's why I decided to do this concept for a video. And I wanna thank y'all for watching. If you did enjoy this, please do give the video a thumbs up. It still does really help and make a difference. I wanna thank Current Body and New Face for partnering with me for today's video again. Gentle reminder, you can get 31% off using my code down below on the New Face Trinity, and I highly recommend doing so. It is an absolute game changer for my routine. It's been such an upgrade, and I feel like I'm aging in reverse. So that's cool. That's always a bonus. <laughs> and I will put a video up here. Actually, I'm gonna put my playlist here of my other top shelf videos for y'all to check out if you liked this one, because like I said, these things are not necessarily about like new releases. They're more about kind of like seasonally, like what I'm into. So they might be valuable to watch even after the fact. Thank y'all for watching. I love you so very, very much. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.